Amen. The crowds in Jerusalem, instructed and guided by disciples, praised the King of Kings, all those standing around them that day. And they shouted at the top of their lungs, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Here was their king riding on the young foal of a donkey. A beast of burden carried our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They laid palm branches and cloaks in the path, paving the way for royalty. Maybe we should have taken our jackets out this morning. Just like they laid out red carpets for celebrities today. The question I have is, was this spirit-filled praise or misguided shouts of acclamation? Was this true heartfelt acclaim to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords or false misconception of popularity, fame, and prosperity here on earth? Would this same crowd truly bow the knee to their king? The Lord led Isaiah to prophesy hundreds of years earlier how the people would react. A picture of ultimate praise and adoration. The prophecy that every knee will bow before their creator. For thousands of years, people have often wondered, what's in the heart of God? His very essence. What does God desire for your life and for all mankind? Sometimes we apply human emotions so we can understand God better. What is God like? What is His will? In our verse, first verse of our Old Testament lesson, verse 22 of chapter 45 in Isaiah, we get a taste of what God is like and His will for all mankind. He said to the Israelites, and He says to us, Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. When I hear the last half of that verse, I think He is a jealous God. He wants all the glory, doesn't he? He wants all glory to go to him because we are his creation. There is no other God besides him. And the very heart of God desires to have a relationship with you through his Son, our Savior. And when God commands you and I to turn to him, he is asking for your complete trust, your faith, your commitment, 100%. Why? Because in him, there is salvation. He said, turn to me and be saved. Stop rebelling. Stop running towards sin. And as you put your trust in him, you can be sure that salvation is yours. Think about how many times he saved those stubborn, rebellious Israelites. How many times he had mercy on his children. And he cried out to them, come back to me. Have you ever made a promise where you swore to keep it? Made an oath? Right? Take an oath saying, I'll keep this promise to you, I swear, on God's name. God made an oath to his creation. But who does God swear to? Think about that. If God makes us an oath, who does he swear to? He said, by myself I have sworn. My mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow. By me every tongue will swear. They will say of me in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. You've heard the scriptures say it before and you know this to be true. God cannot lie. Especially if he swears by himself. And if he swears by himself, you know it's true. You know that when he makes a promise to care for you, to love you, to guide you in this life, he's not going to go back on his word. And specifically, the Lord's promise in this text is that every knee will bow. In heaven, and on earth, and under the earth. He doesn't say, they may bow. I think at some point they could bow. He says they will bow. And today we catch a glimpse of that bowing of the knee on Palm Sunday. 
with the crowds welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. But as we go through this week, how quickly that mood changes and how quickly the hatred escalates by the end, right? As they cry out for his execution. Same people who worshipped him led the cry to crucify him. They didn't truly want to bow the knee to this king anymore because he wasn't the king they wanted. There are times in our life where we don't want to bow either. Sometimes there are more important things to do than to worship God or spend time in his word. There are times we'd rather shy away from talking about Jesus when the opportunity arises. After all, he didn't act like a king when he was here. Look how he rode into Jerusalem. Do I really need to treat him as a king in my life? You guys know how busy my schedule is, right? You know all the things that I have to do to get ready for worship? You know what's coming. I don't have time for Bible study, worship, and personal devotion, meditation. i got better things to do. And yet, we surf the internet for countless hours a day. We have time to enjoy many different forms of entertainment with family and friends. That's important, right? We have time to sit and watch our favorite TV shows. <laughs> sit and spend time with the king. That's too much to ask. After all, he's got Sunday morning. Stop and consider all that Christ gave up for you. And the struggle he went through. Don't we give him a few hours a week? Give thanks to God that that Savior rode into Jerusalem humbly, triumphantly, for you and for me. He came as a servant. He rode in order to die on that cross, knowing what was at the end of this week. To forgive you and me of our selfishness and our pride, thinking it's all about me, when really it's all about him. Today we bow our knee to the king. We get ready to worship him. To follow him to the cross once more. To go to the grave. And then to see the empty tomb. We know this is true. Our sins are forgiven. Our Savior died on the cross and rose again for you. This is the start of the holiest week of the year. This is, this is why we come. This is why we worship. Every single Sunday after is supposed to be a little Easter. We get to celebrate the resurrection again and again. Now as Jesus rode into Jerusalem to the accolades of the crowds of his disciples who were waving the palm branches and screaming, there were some who didn't want to praise Jesus and to praise the king. This is what they said. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Imagine if they had kept quiet and what that would have been like. If the stones would have cried out to the Lord, that would have been amazing, right? As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would truly bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. That's judgment on those who didn't believe. That's scary. They couldn't see it. Unbelief blinded them from seeing who was walking right in front of them. This is the result. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and circle you and hem you in on every side. They were going to be sieged upon. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. This is not pretty. They will not leave one store or another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And when Jesus is saying this, he wept openly for this city. He wept because of their unbelief. Because he saw what was coming. He knew what was coming. These were his enemies who in a few days were going to nail him to the cross and put him to death. And yet he cried for them. Because they would not bow the knee to the true king. You want to know what's in the heart of God? Here it is. Weeping over his enemies. Jesus gives us the clearest picture of what God wants. 
He wants everyone, you and me and all creation, all of society, all of Vacaville, to turn to him and be saved. But sadly, so many still reject the name of Jesus. And God the Father said this would happen. All who have raged against him will come to him and be put to shame. But in the Lord, all the descendants of Israel will be found righteous and will exalt. All those who rejected Jesus on that day would be facing judgment for their own belief. Every knee will bow whether they believe it or not. There will be a day when all of creation will bow down to Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you think Paul had Isaiah 45 in mind? It sounds almost exactly like it, doesn't it? Those who rejected, who raged against our Savior will be put to shame. They will bow to the face of judgment and be eternally damned. Those who believe will be exalted to the eternal glory of the side of our Savior. And when you think about that, and you see people who reject Jesus, how do you feel? Your heart breaks. Because you know what they're facing. And like the Savior, you cry out to them, look what God's Son has done for you. Look how he died for you and washed your sins clean. Because of Jesus, all who believe, you and I, cry out, the Lord is our righteousness and strength. He is the only one who gets through any situation, any temptation as we've gone through this entire Lenten season, those temptations that we struggle with. He is the only one who can help us overcome. He is more powerful than any little problem you might have. He is more powerful than the greatest tragedy that you've experienced, you could ever imagine. He is there to calm all your fears, wipe away all your tears, and replace every single one of them with joy, peace, happiness, all these things that he blesses us with. I like what Paul says. There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from love God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In that statement is confidence. And that's the confidence that the Savior who rode into Jerusalem gives to you. Because he rode so humbly into Jerusalem to die on Good Friday, but he did not stay dead. He was raised to life. He ascended to the throne on your behalf where God exalted him to rule over all creation, to rule over your heart and mind, that we are here to worship him, to bow our knee to the power of the Holy Spirit, and he will come back to be your judge. And take us to be with him, the everlasting joys of heaven. Can't you, can't you see it when Christ says, come, take your inheritance? Doesn't that just fill you with joy? When Christ is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, isn't that what we wait for? Isn't that what we look forward to? In the meantime, we wait. And while we wait, we join together in worship. We join together to study the Word of God to strengthen one another through that Word until He returns in all His glory and splendor. Rejoice with me as we bow our knee to the King. Amen. Please stand. May that wonderful peace of God which goes beyond all human understanding. So guard and keep your minds, your faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.